So we are going to go through an alternate proof of the Pythagorean theorem. It's a variation on the more common proof, but the reason I like this one in particular is that instead of seeing the c squared come out of negative space, we get to actually see this a squared and b squared right here turn into c squared. So I think it's a really fun proof. And let's start with the diagram that we have right here. We see that we have a side of length a on the bottom of our right triangle, so we can extend that into a square with area of a squared. Over here we have a side of length b, and then we have a square of length b squared. Now remember that the area of a square is base times height, but the area of a parallelogram is also base times height. So if we turn these squares into parallelograms, as long as we maintain the same base and height, they will keep the same area values, a squared and b squared. So we're going to apply a transformation to the diagram that we see here. We're going to start with the same triangle with lengths a, b, c and a right angle down here. But instead of keeping our square, we're going to turn it into a parallelogram. In particular, it's going to be a parallelogram where the base has been shifted to the right by a distance of b. Now the height is still a and the base is still a as well, which means the area of this parallelogram is still a squared. It's the same square, but we've shifted it a little bit. On the top here, if we look at this square with area b squared, we're going to turn it into another parallelogram, but this time we're going to shift this side over here down by a distance of a units. Again, the length here is still going to be b, so we have a base of b and a height of b, which means this parallelogram has an area of b squared. Notice that these two parallelograms share a common side. The reason that's true is notice that this side on the parallelogram with area a squared starts at the bottom right corner of this triangle. It goes down a units and it goes to the right b units. On the other hand, the side of the parallelogram with area b squared goes down a units, starting with this corner, and to the right b units. That means that these two both have sides that connect the same pair of points, which means they are the same line segment. So these sides are the same, which means they share that side. So this diagram is accurate, and we want to think about how we can get some information out of this. Notice on the bottom left right here, we have a right angle, and then we have a side A and a side B. That means this right triangle is the same as the one we see up here, so this length is going to be C. The same thing is going on up here. We have a right angle right here, a side length of A and a side length of B. That means this right triangle is congruent to this one as well. So we have a side length of C right here. If we connect these two corners, this corner on the A squared parallelogram to this corner on the B squared parallelogram, notice right here we're going to have a side length of A because this is a parallelogram. And over here we're going to have a side length of B. There's a right angle down here, which means this is the exact same triangle it's going to have a length of c. So if we think about the quadrilateral defined by these four sides, we have a four-sided shape where the length of each of those sides is c. Now we can't yet prove that this is a square because it could also be a rhombus where all the sides are equal. So instead we need to prove that some of these angles are 90 degrees. Then we can establish that it's a square. In order to do that, notice that this side A and this side A are the same, but we have a 90 degree rotation. This side is horizontal, this side is vertical. If we look at this side B and this side B, there's also a 90 degree rotation. It goes from vertical to horizontal. That means that these two triangles are 90 degree rotations of each other. In order to keep the diagram consistent, the side C needs to also be a 90 degree rotation of this side C. That means we have a 90 degree angle here, and we can use the exact same argument up here. This is a 90 degree rotation of that triangle to show that this angle 
must also be 90 degrees. We just need one more angle to seal the deal. In order to do that, notice that this triangle is again a 90 degree rotation of this triangle by the same argument. This side A is rotated, this side B is rotated 90 degrees. That means these two sides with length C must also be a 90 degree rotation. And now we have a quadrilateral with all 90 degree angles and sides that all have length C. That means that this is a square and it has area C squared. Let's see what we can get from this diagram. Notice we have the areas of two parallelograms right here. We want to figure out the value of a squared plus b squared. So let's see what that is. a squared plus b squared. We can write that as first the area of this big square, c squared. But notice the original triangle here is not included in these two parallelograms. These squares and these parallelograms are separate from the triangle. So we're going to need to subtract the area of this triangle, we'll call it A. Down here, we have the exact same triangle that's included in the parallelograms, but is not included in C squared. So we need to add A to make sure we account for all of the area of those parallelograms. Minus A plus A, those are going to cancel out, and we're left with C squared. A squared plus B squared equals c squared, and that's the Pythagorean theorem. So we got to this result by starting with our right triangle and two actual squares with area a squared and b squared, and shifting them into parallelograms that share a common side. That allows us to construct the square with area c squared on this side of the hypotenuse, and by basically taking this triangle down here and using it to fill in the rest of this square, we can show that the area of these two parallelograms put together is exactly c squared. The idea for this proof is based on a video by Think Twice. I'll link the video in the description. It goes through a very visual explanation of how this process works, but I wanted to go through some of the more rigorous elements to show that this is actually a proof of the Pythagorean theorem.